28th of September, 1996. What is your perfect day? Well, my perfect day would be go racing. I would never be racing. You know, I didn't, I didn't obviously foresee what was to come. When I looked at the, my seven rides in the morning, I thought this is the one I fancy the most. As they race up to the line, and it's Wall Street for the money. Wins the Cumberland Lodge, half a length. It was good to get the ball rolling. And now we're going to the second race. I rode the little horse called Diffident. What was, uh, it was a joy to ride. From Diffident now, putting in the beat challenge. Lukai and Princess flying. Don't reckon he made it. It's tight, though. Race three, like I said, was the Queen Elizabeth. All my focus was was on race three. Buzz Rasham is grabbed now by Mark of Esteem. He's too good, the Colt. And it's Mark of Esteem who goes on to win the QE2 stakes. Four force, decorated hero. He was one of, one of my favourites. Decorated hero goes on to win well by four lengths. I remember just getting interviewed and doing like this four winners and uh, then we go to the fifth race. Faithfully and Nick in front and it's going to be five out of five for Frankie. What a day. Got ready for the sixth, then it really hit me. Jesus, you know, this is, you know, I'm one away from equaling a record. Six out of six for Frankie as Lock Angel gets there. And then you know, I realised that I did something special. You know, I am now in the record books. And then I got to, you know, I had people started getting on my back, saying, come on, you can win the seven. Fujiyama crest under top, weight a half in front, he's going to do it. Frankie Dottori, seven out of seven, it's a history maker. I punched the air, but I was, physically, I was exhausted. I, I, I really didn't realise what I, I did. 40 million pounds were lost by bootmakers. Moved the stop mark, I mean, it was, was mad, mental. Thousands and thousands of people that won so much money on that day. What? What they thought the impossible, it, it did happen. That was Saturday, the 28th of September, 1996. Gary, can you believe it's 25 years ago? Unbelievable, Mark. I said to you in the week, I phoned Fred up and, you know, I said, Fred, you know, it's 25 years next week. The Tory, he never knew. I never knew really myself, you know, it was just, I've had uh, the big TV company we're doing a lot this weekend and over it. I never really knew. Honestly, I never knew. Take, take me back to that Saturday morning. What was the plan? Yeah, I was, uh, I lived at Little Allwood at the time, a Warren House, nice house, opposite the point to point course. And, uh, had a, and I, we were going to Worcester for the day to work. I rang my clerk up and uh, Worcester today, Pete. Yeah, lovely, thanks. I love Worcester because I like to get back to Milton Keynes Dogs in the evening. And uh, got to Banbury, all of a sudden M40 shut, not south, north way. I thought, well, if I could do a go for it, I thought, oh, I'll, I'll tell you what we do, Pete. Let's go to Ascot for the day, because I can still get back to Milton Keynes in just over an hour. And uh, I thought we'll have a little, well, I called it a little fiddle. A fiddle is when you're going to win two or three hundred quid on the day and you get a day's wages, you know. <clears throat> And, and you weren't uh, guaranteed to get a pitch, aren't no, you? I never even, no, no, I never even had a pitch, Mark. I was, the, I was on the waiting list there, so if every Wales bookie turned up, I wouldn't have been able to bet, but there was two empty, empty spots there. And, uh, well, I call it, it's like the grave now. When I go to Ascot, I look down and I think, oh, that's my gravestone there. But Fate does some funny things, doesn't it? Funny things, funny things. Can you funny remember things. that Saturday morning, Fred? I, I can remember everything about it, everything about it. My, my, my usual routine, I went in, talked to the lads, give the bonuses what we were going to do. And it was a perfect storm that day. I'll tell you where the perfect storm was. I went big on the bonuses, on the Yankees, lucky 15s, lucky 31s, lucky 63s. I went big style on it, give big bonuses perfect storm it was the busiest meeting ask her it was on tv and it was the most popular jo jockey of the day and what happened he rides seven and i'll tell you you know your life changed before you we that that day the game or the business was out of control never mind what william mills corals ladbrook said it was out of control. We did not know whether we were going to be in business the following morning. It was that. Really? It was that. Did, yeah, did it was you, that do you think you were going to go a bust? I didn't know. That was the problem. We had no computers, no systems that day. We had a few phones. The, the lines were blocked. All the shops were folded in. We had about 200 shops then. All the lines were blocked. They could not get through. And the smallest, uh, I was going to say, I wrote a checkbook the following day of 50 checks, the smallest uh, win was £10,000, the biggest was 212000 But we did not know what we were in for. 
Uh, an old lady from Salford had a 50p each way accumulator, 57,000 quid. She nearly dropped dead when I gave, gave her the 57 grand. I could go on and on and on about it, but it was the perfect storm. Uh, the Acker paid 25,095 to one, but that was at the SP prices. Early prices, well, obviously Fred was laying early prices. It was over 200,000 to one was the Acker at the early prices. And obviously so many people <coughs> in betting shops would take early prices. And I suppose early prices is your story, isn't it? Because obviously yeah, exactly. you're there, Frankie, <clears throat> has won the first six. I wasn't so, doing any arm mark. So you, I was you, honestly. Frank, you'd won six, but because you're just betting race to race, you life, were in all right position. I wasn't with doing you. any arm yet. After five races, we were winning. We we never took a lot yeah. of money. You know, you you, you then big days. You, it, it was quiet on the rails. It so was quiet. The last race, the five thirty-five, Frank De Tory was on Fujiyama Crest, trained yeah. by Sir Michael Stout in the Gordon Carter handicap over two miles. It was top weight, and it was 12 to 1 in the morning, wasn't it? Well, it was it, a bit horse? of 20 so, as well in the so, morning, you right. could have got. So and it had blinkers on, Mark. So oh, the biggest 20 to 1 in the morning. Win. So you're on course, not really done any damage. What are you thinking then, ahead of the 5.35? Well, well I was funking for the six horse to win, because I knew if Frankie won the six, we had a chance. I had a, ch I had a chance of getting big, big money. You know what I mean? Big, big money. And I thought, well, you've got a chance here. And I think the first bet I laid calls was 40 grand at four to one. On the book I wrote, winning it back, it's actually on the back, the statement's on the back. And I thought, oh, just stood this for 160 grand. Hang on a minute, what are you doing? You've only come here with two and a half grand in your pocket for your float. And I've just stood one for 160. So this so is I all was the big it. firms trying to oh, get never, their liabilities off. Never took off, one yeah. cash bet on the day, Fred, yeah. on that last so this is all the big firms all trying big to get firms. rid of the liabilities. I don't think mobile phones were out 25 years ago. Mm. Just started. Just started. And then the coals come in, and then lab books come in, and then all the tote come in. Uh, the tote, they wanted a... And what I were you laying at? Oh. I started off at four to one, then I went seven or two, three to one. But it was like, it was like, I'd done a, t a radio show here in Salford on, for BBC, and the man that I'd done it with, Stephen Nolan, who's very, very good. And he said to me that day, he said, in ev and how he said it, and it was strange, and he said, in every fat person, there's a thin person that want to get out. And you were like, when you were standing on your box that day, you were like the comedian at the end of the pier and you had all the authority and that's why you kept on going. You, you couldn't stop because it was in you. And I went, I don't think so, Steve. He said, you did. And he was right. I think that's what it was. Once I started... So what was in you then? You were just thinking, I don't know, Fuji Armour Crest is the wrong price. It's the wrong also, price. I've, I've, I've owned horses all my life and it had blinkers on. And I know when I had horses, if they were no good, they put a pair of blinkers on them to try to make them better. And I just looked at the form, I thought, blinkers, 20 to 1, 16 to 1, whatever price it was in the morning. And I can lay it at 2 I to could one. lay 2 to 1 at the end. And I just stood there and stood there and stood there. But I will tell you one thing. That following day, everybody in the industry hated me. Because without me, it would have been even money. The, uh, William Hill wanted a, they wanted me to... Uh, lose my licence, they wanted me to take me to court, they wanted the money straight away. I said, look, I've got to sell me a house and a car, but I will pay everyone. And there was one person that stuck by me, and that's this man here on the left there. And you didn't really know him, then? I never you? knew Fred. I never knew him. And he, he, I thought we rung up on a Monday or something, and he said, I'll tell you what, son, what you've done, any proper book he would have done. And he'd give me a bit of life. He, you know, he never gave me the so 1.4 million the, what I've done, but he'd Did give you me sort a bit of admire life. what he'd done then? Because, I mean, everyone was calling him... He would him, have done the I, same I, I remember on a Sunday, everyone was calling him stupid. But I remember, did you actually Should admire I what pay, he did? Mark? I would have done exactly the same. If a horse is 14 to 1 in the morning and it's 6 to 4 on a race course, I want to go 3 to 1. I want to late till the cows come home. Because 9 times out of 10, you're going to be right on it. You know, he did the right thing, but he got the wrong result, and you can't do anything about that. You know, you do these things, and it's, it was a life changer for both of us. And you know what happened after that? I made the best of it. There's a few bookmakers went skin, and a few bookmakers lost their confidence. Within a, few, a month, I bought another four shops off them because they'd done the, yeah. either done the brains in or done the confidence in. So I, I tried to turn it. But you weren't yeah. bet Fred in them days, was no, you? No, I was... Fred Doan. Fred Doan. Let's finish your story then. So you laid it to lose... The last one, 1. I've done 1.4 1. 4 million 1. on 4 the last million. race. Yeah. All right. Now, Pat Henry tried his best to Northern Fleet. And, uh, you know, Fujiyama flew out of the stalls, won by a neck. What do you think when Fujiyama crossed the line? 
Well, when they come around the last bend mark at Ascot, they ring a bell, a brass bell. Mm. And when they rung the bell, and I was watching it on the, naturally, I was watching it on the telly and the clerk, he was holding the book like that, Peter. And honestly, if you'd have had a sledgehammer, you couldn't get the book out of his hand. He was like this, like fearless. And I've, I had no inclination that that horse could win. In my head, it couldn't win. And I thought, well, this ain't going to win. You know, I've just nicked the money here. And I think, I, I think my field money was 654,000. That's what I would have won on the race. Well, not if I would have won, I won it, because I knew it couldn't win. I knew it couldn't win, there was no worries. And then, when it was still in front of Furlong and half from home, and the commentator of the day, it weren't Jim McGuire, they put John Amner doing it, who I later worked with on the BBC. Yeah. And he said, a Furlong to go, it's Fujiyama Quest, Fujiyama Quest. And then I thought, hang on, it's on you here. And then when it went past the line, I, I walked out of the car park, and I was in a daze, to be true. I've done a stupid Do you feel numb? Thing. Do you feel numb? Yeah, it was like it was like uh, Anthony Joshua hitting you on the on the face, like you'd never have got up. And that's I just carried on walking in the car park. I went to Milton Keynes Dogs. My Nicky was there, my boy, and I got there. I never told anyone, and I got there. I missed the first race, and I said, "All right, Nicky." He said, "Yeah, we had a bad start, Dad. We'd done seventeen pound on the first one." I thought, "Little do you know? Do you know what I mean? Seven. And look what your old man's just done at Ascot. But another world, isn't it? You know, one point four million. Did you pay all that back? Because you, you could have." You could I have made Mark, bankrupt, I, you? Mark, I never had it, never had, all I had was a float to start with, but my house at the time, I sold that for 660 grand. That took about a month to sell. So that was a lot of money. A lot of money, it was a good ago, house, yeah. It was a good house, yeah. And I sold that, I had two Mercedes cars, I thought, right, I've got to get rid of these cars, because if I owe money, it's like if I owed you money or Fred money, and if you see me driving around in a new Mercedes, you'll say, hang on a minute, where's my money? And I've done that, bought myself an old car, and I, 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 it took me four years to pay everyone up, every penny. Well, but you, I paid them. You, you know what we call it? He stood on. He stood on, and I would have stood on. What's that mean, stood on? You, you stand on to the bed. You paid everyone you back. You paid. Yeah. He, listen, he could have done that. He could have walked away from it. And, and there was, well, certainly to cause an elderly gambling debts you? weren't enforceable. No, I think he I'd have lost my licence for a year. Yeah, he could have stuck his two fingers yeah. up and walked away. Yeah. Right, let's deal with your story quickly, Ed. So when did you find out because obviously Gary was at the course, you were at home. When do you find out what was going on? Well, Paul, Paul quickly, um, one of my guys in the office phones me up. He said, we've got 20 grand off Marcus, Mark of Esteem. This is in the third race. And that was race. a big race, wasn't it? The QE2. Third, the third race. He said, we've got 20 grand for it at 72. It'll be a bit of interest for you to watch it on TV. Oh, and by the way, it'll be no good. Detour is all the first two winners. That's how it started. On the fourth one, when that wins... They get on the phone to me and say, can you come back to the office? Never been back to the office at all. Never happened before? Never happened before. So I knew we had problems. They get back to the office, he wins on his fourth one. My brother, Peter, who was in the game with me, but had left to run another business that we have, phones me up and says, see, the Tories rolled four winners. How bad is it? I said, I don't know how bad it is, but it's bad. All the shops were trying to ring in. We only had a few phones. There was no computers. Couldn't get through. The phones were blocked. We did not know what the liability was. So the fifth one wins, the sixth one wins. We wait for the seventh one. I go upstairs for a cup of tea with my brother. We'll watch it on there. He said, how much, do, how much have we got? So I said, I don't know. Let's work it out. It wins. I reckon me and I could get together. We could raise five million quid by the, within seven days to pay people out. We'd done about three and a half million quid in. When I knew what the liability was, I was happy. I so knew I was still in when the When you game. knew you'd lost three and a half million, yeah. in many, that was a relief, because you knew you could cover oh, it. I was happy. I went, I, went, I went out that night and had a bit of dinner with my wife. No problem at all, because I knew I was still in the game. And what did I do the following morning? I did the big bonuses again on the, on the Sunday. De Tory was riding again. I don't think he rode one winner <laughs> on the Sunday. And I put a reward up on, on our screen system. I put re reward, dead or alive, don't care which. Good Italian kid, last seen in the Ascot area. So we had a bit of a laugh there. I gave everybody who won over 10,000 quid a video of, of the seven winners, a cigar or flowers and a bottle of champagne. 
just to show that we pay with a smile. Did it, it ever go through your mind, Fred, who edged before that last one? No, I never edged. Never edged. No. And I'm not going to edge on a 14 to 1 chance that it's sat at 6 to 4. Yeah. Yeah. Did what you, you did. You can't talk. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and it would never been done before. I mean, Sir Gordon Richards had gone through the card at Chepstow's six races in 1933. Uh, Alec Russell at Bogside had got six winners and a six race card in 1957, <laughs> but no one had ever done this before, and I don't think anyone ever will. The Magnificent Seven, what did it do for racing? But when, when, when I said to you it was the perfect storm, it was Asker, it was on television. Bogside wouldn't have been on television. Yeah. Chepstow yeah. probably wouldn't have been on television. But you know, and what did it do? It was front page worldwide, this, and you know, it, it made Frankie, I think it made the industry. Uh, and, and you know, I learned from adversity. When you you've dropped one like this, make the best of it and get on with it. And I wouldn't I wouldn't change one single thing that happened that day. You've worked with Frankie De Tori since. What's the yeah, I was in to him? I was in Dubai to work him at the BBC, and uh, we covered the Dubai festival. And I was just standing in the uh, in the foyer of the hotel and waiting for a taxi. Boy, they're not weather. The sweat was dripping off me. All of a sudden. Gardy, gardy, gardy. And I turn around and who is it? Frankie jumping on me back, like thinking I'm an horse like with a whip. And I turn around and I wanted to say, and I went, all right, Frank, and he gave me a little cuddle. And even last year, we was at a point to point at Cottenham. And uh, all of a sudden, come on, come up, like give you a little cuddle, you know. And it was Frankie had a bobble out, or no one knew who it was. And it was him. Look, that day, what mate, did you it, made me, it made, it yeah. made racing, Mark. It made racing. If that, if that never have happened, I'm not being funny, I would never have met Fred, who turned out one, not only in the industry, but a real good friend. Even you, you know, I would never have been here. Who, you wouldn't have had me on bet, Fred. I, would, I was nothing. Right, I've got a final question for both of you. Let's rewind to the Saturday morning, 25 years ago. Would you do anything differently? I'd do, yeah, I'd go bigger bonuses than I did last time. <laughs> no, strictly speaking, I would do exactly the same. I've been doing it for 25 years and I wouldn't change. Would you change anything? Instead of having three shredded weeks in the morning, I'd have four. <laughs> oh, how can you change? You yeah. can't, can you? We're, we're what we are, and we? Yeah. He, he, Dad was a bookie. I would, you know, I would, uh, Mark, what can we do? We're in, we're in the game for life, aren't we, please God? And uh, yeah. I, I, But I still think one thing, 25 years on, look what he's done. Fantastic what he does, Fred, for everyone. Look at the business he's got here. You know, I'll still poodle about. You're still here, Mark, the head of, the head look, of everything. Look, we're look, all about. And look what Frankie Dettori is doing. He's still lovely. winning still big winning. winners. Yep. And he's our superstar of racing. So it was the 28th of September, 1996, when Frank Dettori rode seven winners every race at Ascot that day and the SP accumulator was a massive 25,095 to one. It will never be done again. <laughs>